pro-life Democrats. No, that's not a mistake. In fact, it's a group that's 21 million strong, although they are the first to admit they're not exactly the life of the Democratic Party. You know, it's, it's really tough to be, um, you know, a social justice pro-life American citizen. It really is tough. Pro-life Democrats witness just how tough it can be, with a lackluster showing at an event they sponsored at last month's national convention. We seem to acknowledge all the big diversity within our party, but when it comes to pro-life, it's awful silent. The party first added abortion to its platform in 1976. This year, the platform states, the Democratic Party strongly and unequivocally supports Roe v. Wade and a woman's right to make decisions regarding her pregnancy, including a safe and legal abortion, regardless of ability to pay. We oppose any and all efforts to weaken or undermine that right. Pro-lifers in the party petitioned the platform committee to add language acknowledging there are differences of opinion on abortion. Although party leaders denied their request, they say that doesn't mean the message wasn't heard. We invited them. We enthusiastically asked them to be a part of that process because we know that they are at home under our big tent. So I'd say to anybody, uh, not only do we understand that that perspective exists, but we welcome it as a part of the larger discussion. If party leaders don't listen, it could weaken the Democrat brand. Pro-life Democrats have studied history and done the math and found there tends to be 176 pro-choice Democrats serving in the House of Representatives. To regain the majority, Democrats need 218 seats. And pro-life Democrats say the party can't get there without candidates like them. No party, whether Democrat or Republican, just rely on one section to always have the majority. So that they need us, we need them. Limiting abortion is something they say a majority of Democrats agree on. According to a 2011 Gallup poll, 61 percent support parental consent for minors. 60 percent support a 24-hour waiting period. 59 percent support a ban on partial birth abortions. Nearly 50 percent support requiring an ultrasound. And according to Democrats for Life, about a quarter of Americans who voted for President Obama in 2008 identified themselves as pro-life. Still, instead of fighting an uphill battle, why not switch to the pro-life friendly Republican Party? The answer? Because they're Democrats. If we were looking at, you know, a Republican Party that was uh, compassionate conservatives, that was in favor of, you know, building a really thick social net, you know, to provide these sorts of things, I think it would be a much more complicated question, and I might very well be on the Republican side. Part of the life issue for Schneck and others is the promise of economic support for pregnant women. They say women who believe they'll have government support after the birth of their child are less likely to abort their pregnancy. As a person who was on food stamps, I know how important that was in terms of helping me feed my child once he was born. Former Pennsylvania Congresswoman Kathy Dahl Kemper got pregnant when she was 21. She wasn't married and says she's thankful for the government assistance she received. I actually went back and finished my college degree and was able to do that because there was some support for me to do that uh, and then went on and never used government assistance again. A pro-life stance in the platform could potentially attract people of faith currently turned off by the party stance. They are marginalized, ostracized, even censured in the Democratic Party. That's why the Democrats no longer have people like me. But they could have people like me if they would give this powerful conviction voice in their national uh, on their national platforms. Dahl Kemper believes the issue comes down to money. The extreme right and the extreme left on this issue can raise a lot of money when this issue becomes a prominent um, debate out there in the public forum. Still, Stupak thinks Democrats will eventually come around. Being in min minority for a while uh, it has a way of bringing you around a good common sense and going after and finding good pro-life Democrats that get back in the majority. These Democrats intend to keep making noise while hopefully adding to their ranks. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News.